Hey everyone, this is Zach, just a guy from Indiana, coming at you today for episode 7, The Build Up, Jake Paul versus Mike Tyson, July 20th, Netflix, Dallas Cowboys Stadium. Let's keep this ball rolling. So yesterday, as promised, we were going to talk today about Mike Tyson's career-changing fight. If you haven't had a chance to see yesterday's yet, yesterday's was about Jake Paul's, today is Mike Tyson's, and here we go. When I think about Mike Tyson's career, a very long career, over 50 fights, I always with him think about the phrase that the comeback is always greater than the setback. The comeback is always greater than the setback. In Mike's career, when we talk about how his career started, how it finished. Mike had so many other things going on outside of boxing and a lot of personal things that did and could have interfered mentally with his, you know, boxing matches. And I don't want to focus too much on the personal stuff because I don't feel that's my place. I feel like there's enough out there between his own documentaries that, that touch on that. But that's what draws me to the popular phrase, which is the comeback is greater than the setback. And so with Mike Tyson, when we talk about his best fight, and one of the points I was making in yesterday's video that I want to make today too, is there's a very big difference between best fight and career changing fight. In his best fights, if you type in Mike Tyson's best fights on YouTube, you are going to get all sorts of social media channels, your top podcasters pulling clips from especially his first 33 wins and nonstop knockouts and, and everything. But that's, that's not really what drew me to Mike Tyson. I, I always look for that story. I always look for that, that story of when someone is faced with adversity and still comes back to do something great. And there is a story tucked in here with Mike Tyson. So to fill everyone in who does not know, Mike Tyson started his career going 37 and 0. 37 wins, zero losses, but more importantly, 33 of those first 37 wins were by knockout. So Mike was on a high, obviously, knocking out almost everybody he's facing. And then we go into which the fight that most people know and talk about, which was the Buster Douglas fight. Buster Douglas was a 42 to 1 underdog and ended up beating Mike Tyson and taking away his belts. And I didn't want to just follow the obvious path of what I've heard about that and what happened. And you hear that he was ill prepared, he had a bad team. Um, wasn't training well, you know, all these different things. And that's probably to a point true, and that's all fine and good. But I actually did some digging onto a really cool network that I found. And it was by uh, a guy named Joe Budden, the Joe Budden Network. And it's actually with Mike Tyson. And he asked Mike about the Buster Douglas fight. And Mike doesn't bring up or harp on anything about being ill-prepared, not ready to go, bad team. Instead, I thought he gave a really honest answer. He actually said that was one of his best fights because he took the most punches. And he also goes on to say that it was a reality check because it, even in his previous 33 knockouts, he comes clean and honest and says that he wasn't training very hard. He got so used to knocking people out that even in those previous fights, he wasn't training as hard as he could. So what he was saying is that the training wasn't the same. Uh, the training rather was the same for Buster Douglas as it was in his previous fights. It's just that Buster Douglas came with a game plan. And Buster Douglas's game plan was to smother Mike Tyson. Buster Douglas was a big guy, much bigger than Mike Tyson. And so he smothered him with his size and he kept his jabs coming without moving backwards, as we say. So as we say, we throw a jab, we take a step back. Buster Douglas didn't do that. Instead, 
he threw a jab and continued to smother Mike Tyson and make it very hard for Mike to throw punches back, which is something his previous opponents weren't doing. And so he gave more of the kudos to Buster Douglas and his game plan instead of taking away from his own team, which is what you'll hear all over social media. So another thing that we can debunk a little bit. And I thought it was a very honest answer for Mike to come out and say it was a reality check because he had never really trained that hard. And that he got so used to knocking out everyone that to take that many punches was something new. And he claims it to be one of his favorite fights. So then pause there and let's now, where does he pick up from there? And this is where the comeback is greater than the setback because here is what happens. After the Buster Douglas loss, Tyson goes on to win the eight, his eight next fights and once again becomes the WBC, which is the World Boxing Council, and the WBA, which is the World Boxing Association heavyweight champion again. So he learns and realizes he's still a human being after the Buster Douglas fight. He, he is capable of losing, right? He's not invisible, invincible. So he comes back and wins those eight fights and then regains the belts. And to me, that is the absolute definition of the comeback is greater than the setback. And that can go for so many things in life, but for the Mike Tyson story, coming back after realizing, after all your fame, all your money, all your knockout power, all your publicity, all your talk shows, to lose, to smile at that loss and say it's one of your favorite fights and then use that as fuel to remind the world how good you really are is the definition of Mike Tyson's story. And so, as promised, I wanted to really touch on the Mike Tyson journey. I wanted to keep it simple. I wanted to leave his personal life out of it. But when we look at his overall best career-changing fight, this for me has to be it. And he has the mindset and competitive drive. And that's why I think we're seeing him wanting to get back into the ring so bad now is because he feels like, again, he has a new opportunity to add on something against someone who's very popular in the spotlight right now to add to his legacy. So as always, thank you for tuning in. We will continue to follow this fight. I hope to have an update on the rules of this fight soon, but until they're crystal clear, I won't present them. But we will be talking to you soon. Episode 8 is coming up. Be a good one again. Thank you so much for tuning in. And as always, feel free to like and subscribe. Check out all of our previous videos that builds up to this fight where we go and we disprove, debunk everything you are hearing from your social media channels and your top podcasters. As always, and more importantly than liking and subscribing, I appreciate you for tuning in. You have a good rest of your day.